The culinary landscape of Eswatini unfolds as a tapestry woven with a rich array of traditional flavors and gastronomic delights. Rooted in historical practices and communal traditions, each dish tells a story that resonates of the collective spirit of the Swazi people. From the savoring of staple foods like maize to the communal aspects of preparing and sharing meals, traditional ceremonies such as Amlanga and Kuala not only embody cultural signification of flavors that define Swazi gastronomy, the preparation and consumption of goat or cow meat. Offered by the groom's family during bridal festivities, become symbolic acts of communal celebration, weaving together the threads of tradition and culinary artistry in the global arena. Eswatini engages in cultural diplomacy through its gastronomic expressions, showcasing its culinary traditions. As for national traditions, astronomic traditions, boundaries with culinary ambassadors contributing to a broader narrative that embraces diversity and mutual respect in the global community. As the nation explores avenues for economic diversification. The culinary landscape becomes a potential catalyst for growth, with initiatives aimed at promoting Swazi cuisine as a cultural export. Communal dining experiences, where the kinamic interplay between the Trivamic exploration, kaneish, share meals. Not only nourish the body, but also reinforce the bonds of social cohesion. Culinary traditions become a testabilities of a vibrant culinary future. In the grand narrative of Eswatini's cultural mosaic. Culinary art of of Eswatini's cultural mosaic, that are rooted in the preparation of traditional identity, the gastronomical boundaries, the similarities, past and present converge. Flavorful narrative that defines the essence of Eswatini's cultural exploration. Culinary traditions in Eswatini extend beyond the act of nourishing the body. They become a symphony of cultural expressions, a fusion of flavors that resonate with the heartbeat of the nation. The meticulous preparation of dishes during cultural festivals, such as Amlanga and Inkwala, becomes a culinary choreography. An ancient sense, the ground with a spear, a symbolic act that ties the culinary arts to the sacred rites of marriage. The richness of Swazi kizen is not confined to specific occasions; it permeates everyday life. Creating a culinary mosaic that reflects the diverse essence of the nation. Maize, a staple food, takes center stage, woven into the fabric of daily meals with an artistry that strengthens the community. As we teens, the straw bond, banriti, tradition alone, it is a dynamic exploration that embraces innovation. The nation's gastronomic landscape becomes a canvas where traditional recipes and contemporary culinary trends converge. 
Efforts to promote Swazi Kazan as a cultural export open doors to global culinary dialogues, where the unique flavors of Eswatini find a place on international tables. In the realm of diplomacy, its heritage, when the Lucy come in a postage at a time. Cultural festivals and gastronomic events serve as platforms for showcasing the diversity of Swazi culinary arts, creating a sensory experience that resonates with audiences worldwide. As the nation explores economic diversification, the culinary landscape emerges as a potential economic driver. Initiatives to market comes a vibrant sector, inviting explorers to spirity and unashamedly flavors of Eswatini while immersing themselves in the cultural tapestry. Communal dining experiences, whether in the heart of the homestead or at festive gatherings, become moments of cultural continuity. Culinary traditions passed down through generations form an enduring thread within Eswatini's narrative. The interplay between historical recipes and contemporary innovations, prison future, and the grand narrative of Eswatini's universal Bayeriche chapter unfolds as a masterpiece. Each dish becomes a brushstroke on the canvas of tradition, a sensory exploration that invites the world to savor the richness of Swazi culture. As the nation navigates the currents of change, the gastronomic arts stand as a testament to the resilience, creativity, and dynamic spirit that define Eswatini's cultural exploration. On September, Isobuza I created an equipment in the state over the army. I repealed the constitution and dissolved parliament. He now held absolute power in Swaziland. A new constitution was adopted which reflected traditional Swazi culture. An electoral college of members, the Lebendla, whose members were chosen by local councils across the country, was established. The local councils are generally dominated by Swazi traditionalists, strong supporters of the monarchy. So Visa I set up a traditional sorry was a strong proponent of polygamy. He married into prominent families and is reported to have had at least wives and up to children. At the time of his death he had over grandchildren. So Visa I's clan the Dalmini accounts for almost one quarter of the population of Eswatini. Under Sopusa I, Switzerland was able to maintain good relations with more powerful neighbors, both apartheid, dominated South Africa and Marxist mining, Pepturing, Rain. The largest man made commercial forest is found in Switzerland. King Sapuza I died on August at the age of he had reigned for years and days. This is the longest verifiable reign of any monarch in history. He was succeeded by one of his sons, Makosadiv, who became Miswati I I in Modern Political Developments. In this century, Switzerland has witnessed increased pressure from opposition groups seeking a limitation of the king's powers. Momentum. However, the king has been resistant to such changes. 
Maintaining a system that centralizes power within the monarchy, right?